Thank you Twin Motion for sponsoring this video. Welcome guys, I'm Mooch from Studio PHA, a YouTube channel that focuses on architectural content. So make sure you check my channel out if you want to see more architectural videos. But today I'm gonna be showing you five common mistakes that beginners make when they first start to use Twin Motion. Let's go ahead and get into the video and talk about what these five common mistakes are so you stop making them and you become more efficient and your renders come out better in the future. So the first mistake that people make when they start using Twin Motion is that they use the material that come with twin motion which are fine they look good but they could be better there's this company called Quixel and they created these things called mega scans and I'll show you those in a few minutes but many people don't know this if you have an unreal engine account you actually get mega scans for free that's right all you have to do is go to quixel.com pricing you click where it says subscribe then you just come down here click get started and then you just sign in with your epic games account now once you've linked the account the web page is going to look like this you simply click on products and go down to where it says mega scans and here you're going to see that there's just thousands i'm not going to say thousands i'm pretty sure there's thousands but let's just say hundreds of different kinds of materials that you could use to import into your model. Now using these is actually extremely simple. All you have to do is, for example, we can click this moldy concrete wall here. We just click this green arrow on the right hand corner, click download, and what it's gonna do is that it's gonna save it locally. It's gonna create a custom zipped folder. Now once you download the file, save it somewhere that you're gonna have access to it constantly, and then let's head over to Twin Motion. So once we're on Twin Motion, you pick this eyedropper tool, pick this so that this menu pops up, and you select these nine boxes here once you have that all you have to do is hit this plus button you create a new material and just call it something that you're going to remember by right clicking and putting rename once you've done that you can go ahead and make sure your material is selected and where it says color select the more option and then where it says texture select generic now what you're going to have to do is head over by clicking open to that file folder where you saved the materials that you just downloaded. You're gonna wanna make sure that for texture, you select the albedo file, it says albedo at the end, and we can click this button to head back to the preview. Then we're gonna click the material over here, go to settings, click bump, select the texture, open, and for the bump, we select the normal file. That's gonna give texture to the material. We're also gonna go back to the material, and under reflection, under more, we're gonna select the option for roughness. Now, after setting those three materials, we should be able to drag and drop this two material, and there we go. We have this good looking, well, not in this case, good looking, but this more realistic looking material. And keep in mind that it's gonna look way better once you actually render this. And now, of course, you wanna go ahead and tweak the scale. Now, another mistake that beginners usually tend to make when they're using Twin Motion is that they'll drag and drop a material and leave it as it is. And the problem with materials is that the way that Twin Motion has them set up, they're kind of perfect looking. If you go back to that Mega Scan website, you can actually scroll down to where it says imperfection and there's different types of imperfections that you can add to the material depending on the look that you're trying to achieve. So for example, let's say we wanna go ahead and give this concrete a little bit of damage. We'll select this option here, save it. And then back at Twin Motion, you select that material and where it says reflection, you wanna make sure you select the texture open Go back to where we saved that imperfection file and replace it with the roughness that you downloaded. Now, before you see the difference, because you really can't tell like this, let's make this a little bit darker. And you'll see that when we up the reflection, those imperfections start to show. So you can see the difference before, which is a standard twin motion material versus after with the imperfections in place. So make sure you head back to that website and check out all the imperfections they have and get creative with your renderings. The next common mistake that beginners make on twin motion is that they leave the grass looking the way that it is. They don't do anything to it. And there's actually something that really quickly and really easily is gonna change your rendering completely. And that's heading over to the context menu, clicking vegetation paint, clicking this back arrow, and then going where it says grass and flowers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a combination of different types of grass. Once we've created our group here, we wanna select this vegetation paint tool. And all we have to do is just paint all around. You're gonna notice that it's added some of those grass elements into the places that you picked. And now keep in mind that to keep the file from getting heavier from the processing power to being used up. What Twin Motion does is that it makes uh, any detail that's far away disappear. But again, you'll see that in a rendering, no problem. And then something that you can do to fix that if you wanna, you know, if your computer can handle it, head over to edit and then preferences. And then where it says grass fading, just go ahead and put far. And that's gonna allow you to see all the detail that's far away, even if you zoom out. Keep in mind that doing that may make Twin Motion uh, crash a little bit easier. And you can actually go one by one into these and select the density. So you'll notice that by me 
clicking zero on that one, it automatically got rid of this type of wild grass. So if you want more of that type of wild grass, you select, you put the slider all the way up and you'll notice that it fills up the space completely. You can also go back if you want and drag new items into it. And all of a sudden it'll completely transform the landscape right before your eyes. And of course you can click that and fix the density like so. Next, another common mistake that beginners make when using twin motion is that they don't use this group section here. So what I recommend before starting to plant trees, first you wanna go ahead and make sure you hit save. Once you save, go ahead and right click where it says scene graph and make a new container and we'll call that trees for this example. We'll go back to the context, select vegetation paint once again, and we'll do the same trick that we just went over. And now we're gonna go ahead and start dragging some trees into there. We could even go in there and throw some rocks. And of course, save again. Now, the reason it's important that we created that group that I talked about at the beginning is because once your computer starts to struggle and it twin motions like on the verge of like tuning out and quitting on you, you just wanna make sure that you turn that off. Once you get those trees looking the way you want to, you can just turn that off and you know that those trees will be there. And then once you're ready to render, you can just turn that layer back on. Next is really cool. And a lot of times beginners tend to model massing if they need massing. We're not gonna need massing for this project, but a lot of times you do need massing for your projects. And instead of spending time massing it in another program, you can actually go ahead Click urban, which is under the context menu, and you could select anywhere in the world. We're just, for this example, gonna select this part here. What you use is that you draw, you click this button here to draw a square. You select what point you want as reference, and then you press grab. Just like that, in just a few moments, you'll, you can see that it imported whatever area I picked. I don't even know what area that is, but look at all those buildings that it brought up and that's sufficient enough to function as massing. So that's something that'll save you so much time in your models if you need to use context. Another common mistake that beginners make is that they go ahead and they leave whatever reflections glass provides onto in motion. They just leave it looking the way that it is. So a lot of times you'll notice that what you're seeing there, it just doesn't look good. You can't really tell what's going on. So what you actually have to do is you have to go a little bit out of your way for this and under the search bar, go ahead and type in reflection and we can select this box reflection probe. Now what that does is that it makes this box appear. And, and so once we bring this reflection probe box, what we do is we place it in our model somewhere and we increase the size. And it takes a little bit of playing around with, but you'll notice that it automatically adjusts the reflection to make it so much better. So like I said, you have to play with the scale of it to get it right. And you also have to play around with the location of it. Once we do that, we can head back to our glass and turn down the opacity or turn it up as you choose. But you'll see that you have much more realistic reflections than we did before because now it's actually picking up the environment. I have no idea how many mistakes we've gone over. We've probably gone over more than five, but uh, just in case, we have, this is a bonus one. You see that little city in the background? The way you get rid of it is by clicking the location, which is under um, the settings button. You click location and then where it says background, you just select the picture. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and select mountains and you can move the rotation around just to make it fit uh, your rendering better. So we'll go ahead and turn back our trees create an image and I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and render it. And this that you're looking at here is one of the quick snapshots that I made using the tips that I went over in this video to make a rendering. Now, once again, I'd like to thank Twin Motion for sponsoring this video. And I'd like to remind you that Twin Motion is a free program. You can actually get a copy. It's a trial version, but it's a perpetual trial, meaning that if you download it, it's yours to keep forever and you can use it as many times as you want. You just can't use it for commercial reasons. Now, if you do have Rhino 5, 6, or 7, you can actually get Twin Motion for free because of a recent partnership between Rhino and Twin Motion. And as always, thank you for watching this video. I'm Mooch from Studio PHA, and I'll see you down in the comments.